Uh, why so much focus here on how many streaming subscribers Netflix has? Uh, Trish is such a huge driver of the business. Every additional person you can get to pay $7.99 a month for a Netflix uh, subscription is going to give you that revenue that's really been powering this stock. And mm -hmm. that revenue number is expected to be in the neighborhood of $1.1 billion this quarter. And let's not forget that this is not a cheap business to be running. They have to pay a lot of money for the content. They have to pay a lot of money to expand it globally and they just did a big expansion in the Netherlands which may way on the bottom line. So if you can offset that by getting a few more subscribers, boy that really helps your business. And certainly people are expecting that this company is going to continue to add on subscribers by the boatload. So the outlook is going to be just as important for this company. Yeah, no, really incredible the idea that they're surpassing HBO. Tuna, I want to go over to you. Um, content. That's why they've been able to surpass HBO, but the content gets increasingly more expensive the more successful it is, of course, because uh, in, in many of these cases, they don't actually own it. So how do they, how do they diffuse the cost, the increasing costs of the successful content? Well, I think they're very um, pragmatic in how they're managing their content costs. Um, they're, um, they, they've, they're starting to spread some of that out into their original programming, which is still a relatively small base of their content. Um, they have been disciplined to walk away from deals that they feel was overpriced, like the Viacom MTV deal. You saw them walk away. Um, they are trying to um, kind of leverage the exclusivity um, and at the same time to uh, uh, grow the uh, library offerings, um, not just on the television side, but on the movie side. So I think um, while there's still concerns that content spending is um, uh, pretty much um, you know, uh, going to be a constraint, at least in the near term, I think they've done a pretty good job to contain some of the concerns that we have. You know, John, talk to me about this opportunity that they may have in cable by getting onto the on-set top boxes. Well, you know, the, the, the story for so long was that Netflix is the cable killer, that so many people yeah. can choose to cut the cord and, and, and because Netflix has become such a significant part of the story. I think pay TV players right now are looking for any reason to keep you inside the cable world, and so offering Netflix would be a no-brainer. I think that comes down to uh, what the revenue-sharing agreement is going to be. You know, is Netflix willing to give up? some of that seven ninety nine a month and give it to the cable operators uh. or since it already thinks it can get sixty to ninety million subscribers here in the US yeah, maybe it doesn't will need it play it. tough you're right it, ooh, could, could they play tough and go ahead tuna can they continue to charge seven ninety nine through uh, the regular cable providers well I think that's an interesting question but I would argue that just as important as the revenue split is the issue of who controls the uh, customer relationship one of the things I found interesting in uh, Netflix's uh, partnership with Virgin Media and TiVo in the UK was that they actually are maintaining the billing uh, relationship uh, in that particular case, which, you know, if you think about it, the um, potential upside from controlling the data that you can get, you know, from the customer, the viewership, et cetera, all of those things are very, very attractive to uh, a whole lot of parties. So I would be very, very surprised if the U.S. cable operators will, um, you know, allow that. Uh, mm. So that's an interesting point. And also the uh, revenue split issue, I uh, really um, have my um, doubts because you could argue that Comcast, the Time Warner cables have a lot more leverage in this particular case in the U.S. compared to uh, uh, in the U.K. Okay, let's get some uh, actionable information here with Mark Sebastian joining us uh, from Chicago. Uh, give us an idea of what you're seeing uh, or what you're doing right now ahead of that uh, important earnings report. Yeah, you know, Netflix is a stock. We have a technical term for how the stock moves. It's cuckoo, cuckoo bananas. Wow, the stock, real technical. It's, it's very technical. <laughs> the stock just moves around everywhere. I mean, the stock's down 60, 70 percent over a year, then it's up two or three hundred percent. This is a crazy stock. Now, the last, <laughs> it really is. The last earnings, it actually didn't move that much. Um, they're pricing out the, the move for earnings tonight at around 45 to 50 bucks, 13, 14 percent. It's a lot of movement. I think that this might be one of those quarters where we have a little bit of a holding pattern. I'd want to probably sell into this with a very, very hedged position. The trade I'm looking at is an OCK 25 Nov 1 weekly calendar paying about a buck 40. Um, I really do well if Netflix sits here. Um, and if Netflix kind of blows up, uh, I'm out the, the dollar 40 I paid. But if Netflix stays anywhere in that kind of $30 range, I think I can double or triple my money.